If there's one thing that drives my instrument students nuts more than anything else, it's setting up and using the GPS for instrument flight. Though it's getting up there in age, the Garmin 430 or 530 is a great IFR platform that you still find in a lot of aircraft, especially trainers. We have what's called a stack, a pair of GPS units, the 530 on top and the 430 on the bottom. We're going to simulate an IFR flight from College Park, Maryland to Lancaster, Pennsylvania to give you a crash course on using the unit. First, let's switch our avionics master on, which will power up the GPS. It'll go through a few initialization screens. Now, because we're in a flight simulator, it'll look a bit different, but you'll be able to validate that the databases are up to date. We'll hit enter. This is the panel self-test screen. It's not simulated here, but it'll deflect the CDI needles on the number one VOR to the left as indicated on the screen. One needle will deflect to the left one half scale, and the other will deflect up one half scale. This allows us to verify that the VOR head is properly working off the GPS. We should be able to do the same thing for the other GPS unit for the number two VOR. Let's input our flight plan. We're gonna enter everything on the 530 top unit and it'll automatically feed the 430 unit below. We'll hit the FPL key. There are two knobs on the unit. The knob on the right controls inputs into the main screen while the one on the left handles frequencies in the blue section to the left. We want the knob on the right. The front of that knob says push cursor. If we push it, a cursor blinks on the blank flight plan. There's a small inner knob and a thicker outer knob. If we twist the inner knob one click, it brings up the waypoint entry page. We want to start with our departure point, KCGS. The K is already input for us as it defaults to this, so we want to move over one letter to the right. We do that with one click on the large outer knob. Once there, we go back to the inner knob and twist to cycle through the letters, stopping at C. We move over to the right by twisting one click right on the outer knob again, then go to the inner knob to cycle through until we get G. One click over on the big knob, then the inner knob to cycle to S. We see the airport information populate. Let's hit enter and it's added to our flight plan. The next point is the Krant intersection. The cursor is already active below KCGS, where we want to input Krant, so we can just twist the inner knob once to bring up the input page. We'll use the outer knob to move around and the inner to select letters again, hitting enter when we're done. The next point in the plan is a Victor airway. Unfortunately, the 430-530 isn't able to parse airways, so we'll need to input each fix ourselves. The simulator allows for using the PC keyboard to enter in waypoints, which you of course can't do in the airplane, but it'll help us save some time here. Now, we're gonna purposely make a mistake and skip over a waypoint by entering EMI, the Westminster VOR. We skipped Yanni, which comes before EMI. In order to insert that in between belts and EMI, let's first move the cursor so that it's on EMI by twisting the outer knob over to the left one click. Then we'll start inputting the skipped fix using the inner knob like we would for any input. It feels weird to do this as it seems like we're replacing EMI, but really we're inserting Yanni before EMI, as you can see on the flight plan page. We'll continue adding the rest of the fixes along the route ending with the destination airport, Lancaster. If we hit FPL, we're back on the moving map screen and the route is now overlaid on it. We can zoom out using the up button a few times to see the entire route and zoom back in with the down button. The number on the lower left corner shows the map scale we're using. Let's set some frequencies. We'll start with the AWOS for College Park, 121.22. We want that on COM2, which is controlled by the lower 430 unit. Going over to the left knob on that one, we're going to twist the inner and outer knobs to set that frequency and hit the C button with the dual arrows to swap the active and standby frequencies. We'll set up CTAF 122.97 on COM1, and when that's active, we'll put an assigned departure frequency 125.65 on standby. Now, our flight plan contains the EMI Vortac. Let's say we want to have that frequency keyed up in case we want to switch over from tracking the GPS to directly using the VOR. We could set the VOR frequency by first pushing the knob. It says push C slash V, which means the cursor jumps from C com to V VOR. Notice that white cursor moved down. Now we can set the VOR frequency 117.9 and go active. It's not likely we'd be able to pick up the signal from the distant VOR on the ground like this, but it works in the sim and we get an ident to the VOR, as well as the radial we're currently on on our distance from it. 
To track the VOR, we need to switch the VOR from GPS mode to VLOC or VOR localizer mode by pressing CDI. Now the number one VOR works off the VOR and we can twist the OBS knob to set a radial. We'll put it back on GPS mode by hitting CDI again. Let's look at the navigation page on the 430. Notice at the bottom of each screen in the blue box it says nav with a bunch of windows. These are the number of windows in the nav function. If we twist the inner knob over one click left, we move to a different window, giving us a representation of the CDI deflection with the needle currently in the middle and other info. We can customize the fields by hitting menu, then enter to change fields. A cursor comes up on each field. Let's click over using the outer knob to GS, ground speed. Let's swap that out for bearing. This is the straight line track between the aircraft position and a selected waypoint as opposed to the desired track of the course between the two waypoints. It helps if we're off course to know bearing as a way to correct. So let's go down to the hold short line and get ready for departure. Our IFR release contains an instruction of fly heading 360 and maintain 3000 feet, so we won't be flying direct to Krant as indicated in our cleared flight plan. Once we're airborne and tuned to that assigned 360 heading, and after checking in with departure, they instruct us to proceed direct to belts. This is the second fix in our route. We hit FPL, hit the cursor button, twist the outer knob to click down to belts, hit the D button for direct, then enter and enter again. Looking at our navigation page, our desired track DTK to belts is 355. Current track is 010, so we should turn about 15 degrees to the left. Just like all instrument flying, a bit of guess and check work is involved in finding the right heading to track to the waypoint. We want our track TRK to match our desired track DTK, but we also want that CDI needle to be centered. You'll know you're centered when not only is the needle in the middle, but that bearing BRG field is the same as the desired track 355. We could pull up nav information on the 530 as well by clicking over one to the left on the inner knob, and we can zoom out to see our route better. The GPS has three modes in route, terminal, and approach. We're currently in terminal mode as indicated in the bottom left. This mode is active when we're within 30 miles of either our departure or destination. It means that the course width is such that we'll have a full needle deflection to the right or left if we're one nautical mile off course. That sensitivity will get greater as we go on to an approach and gets less in en route mode. The WAS enabled unit like we have here provides what's called turn anticipation. Rather than the traditional practice of flying over a station or fix and then making a turn, we can fly by most waypoints and the unit will calculate when to make a standard rate turn at current ground speed so that we roll out on our new course. It begins counting us down and tells us the new course to turn to. We start the turn when the countdown ends. Let's jump ahead a bit in the flight. We've just passed Vinny and are getting closer to the destination. We get handed off to Harrisburg Approach 126.45, who will tell us to expect the RNAV approach for runway 26. We can now load that approach into the GPS. We hit PROC, then enter for select approach. The approaches at Lancaster pop up. We want the RNAV 26, which we scroll to using the outer knob and hit enter. There's one transition, headed, and an option to select vectors. For reasons we won't really get into here, it's preferable to not use the vectors option on the 43530 as it could increase your workload later on. So even if we expect to get vectors to final, let's choose headed. We want to just load it for now as we haven't been instructed to change course or anything yet. Notice when we do, our navigation hasn't changed. We're still going to the next fix, roast. We can preview the approach and make sure it matches what we see on our approach plate. We continue on a bit and ATC tells us to turn right heading 080 for vectors for the approach. As we make the turn, we realize that the chances are about nil that we get sent direct to the headed fix, especially as there's no procedure turn there. We anticipate a vector which will have us intersect the approach course between headed and FERCO. So we go into the flight plan and scroll down to FERCO, the end point of the leg we'll be intercepting. With the cursor over that, we hit menu, then enter for activate leg. The approach is now active as we can see from the new mode LPV, the type of approach we'll be doing. 
Notice that the needles on the VOR1 have deflected showing the approach guidance. ATC puts us on a base leg and then gives us a descent and a turn to intercept, clearing us for the approach. As the localizer needle comes in, we turn to track it and wait for the glide slope needle to come in to track that as well, just as we would do on an ILS approach. We fly this one down and it's pretty clear below 3000 feet, so we have no trouble bringing it into land. We've covered a lot in this video, so we'll leave out missed procedures and holds just to save your brain, but you can learn so much more about the 430, 530, and IFR flying in general on our Instrument Ground School. Check that out, as well as our other Flight Insight courses, at the link here or in the description. See you there.